Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley. I'm the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. Today we're going to do some work with Google Earth Studio, but before we get started, just wanted to point out that uh, journalisttoolbox.org has uh, tools and resources uh, uh, for you to uh, explore all kinds of different areas of journalism. Um, uh, everything from digital tools to First Amendment, ethics, diversity, uh, you name it, uh, we've got it in here. Much of it's organized by beats that you would uh, find in a newsroom. So you can go over here to browse topics on the rail uh, and call up whatever subject uh, you happen to be looking for. Um, you can also uh, find things like business resources, uh, tools for covering consumer uh, uh, retail, uh, expert sources, all kinds of different resources. Under our data journalism tab, we have a section called mapping and geocoding uh, that has a lot of Google Earth tools, uh, NASA Landsat uh, imagery, things like that, uh, that you can take and uh, convert into some pretty cool uh, visuals and, and graphics and tell stories in different ways with it. Uh, we're going to explore one of those tools today. It's called Google Earth Studio. Uh, so if you want to hit pause uh, and go to google.com slash earth slash studio, uh, this link can also be found in our uh, description of this video on YouTube. Uh, so you can find the link there. Go ahead and open this tool up. Um, one of the tricks with this tool, and this uh, tool allows you to do 3D building renderings uh, and things like that, little flyover zoom ins, uh, and export video of it right out of your browser window, which is quite nice. Um, you may have uh, used Google Earth Pro before. Uh, this is a free version of Google Earth that you can download to your computer. Uh, it's very clunky. It's kind of a heavy piece of software, uh, but you can find historical satellite imagery in it. And you can do little flyovers and zoom ins uh, with video tools in it. Uh, but this one is browser based. It is very simple to use. The trick with this is you have to sign up for it. Um, so you can hit Try Google Earth Studio in the upper right hand corner. And mine will go ahead and kick through because I've already got an account. Um, uh, you can set up the free account and it will give you some basic tools. And I'll, uh, as we're, I'm going through and exporting the video, I'll show you how to upgrade it to uh, you know, some better export tools. So you can download your videos as a QuickTime movie to your desktop. Um, uh, the basic version before you upgrade, uh, and it's a free upgrade, it doesn't cost anything, which is fantastic. Um, the upgrade uh, allows you to export as a QuickTime movie as opposed to a JPEG uh, uh, video uh, format, which you, then you have to take and convert in uh, oh, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, or something like that. Um, so once you set up the account in Google Earth Studio, it'll send you a little email. Uh, it usually takes a few minutes before uh, uh, you're registered. You can just use your Gmail address to do it. Um, it gives you this interface. Um, it allows you to open up a blank project or uh, open up uh, a past project. Uh, you know, if I've got one built in here already that I've saved. Um, most of mine I export as I build, so I don't have anything you know open in here. Uh, the other thing it has over here by blank project uh, is it has a little pull down menu called Quick Starts. This is typically where I go uh, to start a project. Quick Starts give me some basic templates uh, where I can fly from one point to another by just typing in either the street address, name of the building, um, longitude, latitude, you know, you name it. Or I can do a spiral, kind of a zoom in on something. That's kind of a pretty shot. You could orbit around something too. If you've got a, uh, you know, building or, you know, maybe uh, some type of uh, mountain or something like that that you want to fly around and orbit around it, you can do it. And you can control the speeds of all these. You also have a little zoom too where you can start out and zoom in very quickly to a specific area or a building. It'll do a, a pretty deep zoom in into it. Um, a lot of times you'll see these used on uh, documentary programs. Uh, National Geographic uses a lot of zoom twos as transitions uh, uh, in their documentaries. Uh, you'll see it sometimes on ABC World News Tonight. Uh, they'll zoom in when David Muir says, you know, our top story tonight from Orlando, Florida, and you know, they'll uh, do the zoom two with it. Um, so I'm going to do an orbit. I'm going to select orbit. We'll just start with that one. But you can experiment with any of these. Spiral is a really cool one, too. Um, but let's start with an orbit. Maybe we'll create two of these. Uh, you can hit the arrow here or just the start button. It's got pretty basic navigation to this. 
and it starts you with just uh, some crosshairs uh, in the middle of, uh, of the earth. Uh, down here, you can search uh, uh, where you want to go with it. Um, so I want to orbit around, let's choose beautiful Wrigley Field. I uh, live in Chicago. I live just a couple blocks from Wrigley Field. Uh, and it uh, just plants uh, a nice little uh, crosshair right in the middle of Wrigley Field. And you, know, you can see the neighborhood here. And I, I live right up Sheridan Road here, uh, right, right by where the L is. Uh, and, uh, or Sheffield uh, Avenue, I should say. Sheridan uh, runs here. I live on Sheridan. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, you can hit the next button once you've, it's geolocated where, where you want it to center. And now it defaults to an orbit. Um, and this is a pretty good one. You know, it, uh, it, it kind of centers the ballpark. And there you see a nice little view of the neighborhood. And, you know, this is Gallagher way over here and the new hotel. And this is the new uh, retail and, and uh, a housing complex that they built next door to it. Um, but you can adjust down here uh, the altitude. Um, so if I want to have it lower and get more of a broader look of, at the neighborhood, um, I can adjust the altitude of it. So I can have less of the ballpark in and more of the city or more of the ballpark. I can adjust my altitude. So if I want it to look down into the ballpark a little bit more, I can have it do that. That's a nice pretty shot. You know, I could uh, you know, lower the altitude uh, uh, and radius a bit and get more of the city of Chicago in the background. You know, if I wanted to, I could drop it down and, you know, that way it would rotate around. You could see the city in the background. That's kind of a cool shot too. Maybe we'll do this one. So, you know, you can make these, you know, basic adjustments. Right now, uh, it is spinning counterclockwise. I can hit clockwise to have it spin the other direction. Again, real basic settings. You have the lake in the background, it's a beautiful shot. I'll hit the green arrow. This controls the speed. We're, you notice we're doing a pretty fast orbit here at 50 seconds. Uh, you know, I can slow it down a little bit and, and go up to 65 seconds uh, and slow it down a bit. So if I drop the, the number, you know, down to like 35, it'll make it spin really fast, which you don't want. Um, this is a pretty be uh, beautiful shot here. And it's uh, rotating pretty slowly. I can take it up to 80 seconds and maybe even slow it down even more. There we go. That's a nice slow orbit. Hit the check mark. And it takes me uh, then uh, to this little keyframe, this little uh, uh, set here. Uh, where I can go in and adjust the numbers again here, the longitude, latitude, and, and kind of reposition things here. You know, I can move it around if I want it uh, to widen it a little bit or, or move my frame over a little bit. I can make those adjustments uh, just to uh, move them around. Um, uh, it has a playback button here, so I can kind of see if I made the adjustment, what it looks like now. Again, these little crosshairs won't uh, appear uh, on the... Uh, uh, video when we export it, but they're just there for positional purposes. Um, up here, I can do uh, a, a little clip art. Uh, I can do uh, save the crate, uh, frame as a, a snapshot. Uh, so if I want it as a, a static image, you know, it's, uh, you can just export it right out of here. It'll download to your uh, downloads folder. Um, what I have up here is a render button. Uh, yours might look a little bit different, uh, you know, uh, but. Uh, uh, do not despair. I'll, I'll show you kind of how to work around it. But regardless, uh, you know, you go ahead and hit this button here. And uh, it'll allow you to title it. Okay. And yours probably has request cloud rendering here. Um, hit that button and request cloud rendering. Now, that might take a few days for you to get it. Well, the first time you get it done, uh, you know, you never have to do it again. It'll always say cloud rendering. What this does is allows you to send your uh, video up to the cloud. Uh, it'll mix down and render, and then you can export it. Uh, it'll give you the uh, MP4. I, I said QuickTime Movie earlier. I meant MP4 uh, video format. Um, over here, uh, this is what you probably have as the default, is the image sequence, the JPEG, which is just a series of photos layered on top of each other. You can export this as, as a JPEG sequence. Uh, that's fine. Uh, however, uh, you know, you do have to do some work uh, with it in uh, Adobe Premiere or Final Cut or another editing tool, uh, you know, before it's in a format that you can take and, and just move it up 
uh, somewhere. Whereas the MP4, uh, once you download it, you're set. Um, you're good to go. Uh, dimensions, uh, you can adjust here if you want to go 1080, 1920. Um, uh, you can uh, adjust, it puts a watermark on here. Uh, any of the images you use in Google Earth tools uh, are public record. Uh, they're uh, using uh, uh, NASA satellite imagery, NOAA, other government agencies for this, as well as uh, a building rendering company that uh, donates their, uh, actually doesn't donate, uh, Google pays for it. Uh, but has rights-free uh, uh, usage uh, on this building and all, the, all these building images. Um, so you can adjust this. Uh, right now it's sitting in the bottom right, but if I used a lower third for TV, I might need this uh, in, the, in the top right. Uh, so you can move it up here if you needed to move the credit. Um, and, and once you have it set up the way you want, I'm actually going to move this back down to uh, bottom right. And hit submit button and it'll begin to render it'll tell me up here and it'll say it's gone successfully to the cloud to render uh, and typically it's about four or five minutes sometimes a little longer uh, suddenly I'll get a new email uh, in my uh, email folder uh, and uh, uh, you know there I have it uh, it'll send me a link saying your video has rendered here's the link to it you can download it here and, and you're good to go um, so I want to show you one more thing with uh, Earth Studio, another setting you can use with this. Um, and again, you can go back in here to uh, uh, into your renders folder and, and see if you want to uh, uh, see uh, what's in your queue and, and is rendering. I can go back and reopen this. Um, you know, here it shows ones I've done in the past of the Grand Canyon, Wrigley Field, Nebraska State Capitol, among others. Um, so you can see the past ones I've got there. Um, I could delete them out too if I want to as I go. So I'll go ahead and reload this. And go back to blank project. And I'll do a different quick start this time. I'll do the spiral. Hit start. This time I'll do the Eiffel Tower. And again, it puts crosshairs right on top of the Eiffel Tower. You see the satellite imagery there. And now you'll see the little spiral. And you can change the tracking and the pattern that this comes in. You can just move the keyframes around. So if I wanted to tighten it a little bit more, I can adjust my radius and things like that. The angle, all of this stuff. And you'll see it kind of adjusts on the fly. The radius is 2,000 meters, but if I tighten it up, it'll get in a little closer. You can start from a higher altitude, bring it in, swing it across the river, and then it'll end right here at this road. And it just loops around. So it's a Pretty fast rotation. I'm going to slow it down to about 50 seconds. Give it a nice pretty glide as opposed to uh, rushing in. You don't want to make your, your viewer dizzy. <laughs> Hit the green check mark. Again, you can go in and do more detailed work here. You can adjust these keyframes. Uh, I, I found that its pre-settings are actually pretty darn good on, on it. Uh, you know, I, I, by the time I get to this point, most of my uh, editing is done. But you know, if you need to change something at the last minute, you can uh, go in and drag these around, and, and it'll, it'll adjust on the fly for you. I can do my snapshot again. Grab the little snapshot of it, and just do another building rendering. Eiffel spiral. I'm going to send it out as a MP4. Uh, it does give you some post-processing effects that you can do. You can do some virtual reality with this, which is pretty cool. And it's submitting. It tells me right up here that's going to cloud rendering. Uh, and I should have both of these in my email uh, within, you know, anywhere from four to eight minutes, typically. Uh, and it just sends you a link to it. You can download it and move it you know, into YouTube or wherever you want to move the, the video to. Um, so that is Google Earth Studio, a browser-based tool, very handy for if you need you know, some quick and dirty 
uh, uh, overhead drone footage that, and you can't fly a drone there, uh, uh, you can use this tool uh, to recreate uh, the video or the uh, image. That's all I had for now. Take care.